Now here's the most controversial of all of them, step number four. Read the KJV. What's the KJV, Nehemiah? Keith Johnson version. So you do watch my stuff. I you heard, do know what's going on. I you, heard you, you made that. You, you do. <laughs> Welcome to Hebrew Gospel Pearls, episode number 31. <laughs> <laughs> we are studying with Dr. Nehemia Gordon, PhD from Bar Ilan. People are rolling up their sleeves, Nehemia. This is really good news. We had a couple comments, though, some people that got a little confused. They had mm. a little bit of confusion. They wanted yeah. to, can you explain? They said, no, no, they explained. The question was, why would I want to become a study partner? In other words, what you, in other words they're asking the question, what are you guys doing behind the wall that would make me as a public person want to do that. So I want to give you first a chance to explain to our folks that have been listening mm. for 31 episodes. They still haven't decided to go into yeah. the next section. Can you just tell them a little bit of the types of things that we'd be able to do with you as we're in the plus episode? Well, I mean, we're continuing the conversation mm -hmm. and uh, we're you know going deeper. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, we, we've had episodes where we don't even get out of the first <laughs> word. <laughs> <laughs> in the public episode, yeah. and then we only get to continue the conversation um, really o over into the into the in the plus episode. Mm -hmm. And then there's some things where in advance we say that's kind of a little bit more controversial. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit maybe advanced for some people. Mm -hmm. Let's save that for the plus mm -hmm. episode. And why do you do that? Why do you want to save it for that? Do you have? Is it because you just have more time? Is it? Well, is I this, mean, is part, this a, partly, frankly, it is because I have more time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but it's also a matter of um, you know my thought is there are some people who they maybe don't want all that information, right? Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. want a certain amount, and they're you know willing to put in thirty minutes or forty five minutes and mm -hmm. listen and learn something and. You know, the people who want to go deeper, they have the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a verse that I memorized. It says, now the Breans are more noble character than the Thessalonians because mm. they search the scriptures to see if what Nehemiah said is true or <laughs> what Paul said is true. You know what I, I always loved he, about that yeah, verse? Yeah. In Thess in, uh, um, uh, about the Thessalonians and the Bereans mm -hmm. is that um, they didn't search the scriptures the way it formulates it to see that what Paul said yeah. was true but whether what That's Paul right. said was true, That's right. they're opening up the possibility, maybe it's not true. Maybe it's not. Right. So they weren't proof texting. That's, That's the right. thing people do today, That's they right. proof text. We have this doctrine. Now let's find the, all the verses that support our doctrine. Mm. Instead of let's look at all the verses in the text and then determine what the doctrine should be. Mm -hmm. And so I love that that's the Bereans were doing. Mm. The Bereans were doing what we're doing. Mm. They were looking to find out, okay, Let's look at all the text and see if this really plays out mm -hmm. rather than proof texting to, you know, prove what you already believe. So I want to give my reason why I think people should do it. And yeah. that is that I have been experiencing this with you since 2002. It's a, it's a lot of time. And, and the way that it has changed me, Nehemiah, is for me to be able to, I used to, I used to get so frustrated. I'd ask you a question. And you'd say, well, have you searched? Hey, Nehemiah, can you tell me such and such? And you'd say, well, go here. And I used to get frustrated. This was back in the day before quick little, now this is the days we had to. My wife goes through this every morning. No, no. <laughs> we wake up in the morning and we do a Bible study. Right. And she'll say, so here's her little notebook, a little pink notebook, and yeah. she's writing. She says, okay, so Nehemia, what's such and such? Let's see what the Tanakh says. Oh, can't you just tell me? No, let's let Yehovah I, tell you. So, and we read it in the Tanakh. Yeah. And is that not ha what happened? <laughs> she's she's <laughs> still sitting back there confirming. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, it really comes from my, my guiding philosophy in life um, comes from this motto that, that comes from the, sometime around the eighth century, there was this Karate teacher and he lived at a time, and what I love about this is I experienced this myself. He lived at a time where he was told, you have to accept the interpretation of these great rabbis, of these great sages. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you disagree, you have to accept that interpretation. I was told that. And that was the reality, that was the legal reality in his time. Uh, in my reality, it was the religious social reality, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you could actually get executed back then if you didn't agree with that. And he came up with this motto, which was, search well in the scripture and do not blindly rely on anyone's opinion. Mm -hmm. And the point there was, it's the exact polar opposite of what, of what, of what the rabbinical Judaism teaches. As far as I know, it's the polar opposite of what Catholicism teaches, 
which is you have to obey what the Pope you know, teaches and what the church teaches, and you have to not only obey it, but believe it, um, or at least certain things that they teach. And here he says, no, follow what God says in Scripture. So I don't want to be that um, uh, teacher who just says, I am the Bible answer man. Mm -hmm. Here are the answers. Accept everything I say. Don't accept anything I say. Mm -hmm. Go and search it for yourself. And if I'm wrong, follow the truth. Yeah. And I do that with the audience. I do it with my own wife yeah. because so. she needs to see it for herself. And it's so much more powerful when she sees it for herself than, uh, well, my husband told me this is what God says. Okay. So let me, let me finish this part of it. Thank you because you have, you have you've walked that out and I've applied that in my life and people get very yeah. frustrated about it. But in our, tar, in our entire study process, there's a saying that, yeah. I, and I, look, I need a minute for this, Nehemiah. This is my time. first minute. Yeah. Uh, there's a the saying that I'm, I'm operating by. Yeah. And it was in our kitchen even as a kid. Mm -hmm. And it said, uh, give a person a fish, they eat for a day. Teach a person to fish and they eat for a lifetime. And we're not giving fish <laughs> in this roll up the sleeve series. We're right. teaching people to fish. So someone, they, they asked the question, what is it that you guys are doing in there? And so there are five things that we're doing in the preparation study guide. I want to read these five mm. things. The first thing we asked to do, step five steps. Look, I've got my little red, look, I, I'm up so excited. I've got my little, my little thing. You, you get to download it. You have it there. There's and where five. can I download that? Not, no. Where so do they download that from? At BFA International okay. on the front. But this is only for our study partners. So I'm showing the people who have not yet study partners mm -hmm. what the five steps are. Can I read them? And I'd like you sure. to evaluate if you, because okay. you don't look I've at I've actually any, never you, heard this you, before. He doesn't look at my stuff. He doesn't. <laughs> I'm nervous. You haven't watched my series. I mean, that's, I have you have a, a series? <laughs> I've got mini series. Yeah, I bet you do. All right. <laughs> so step one. Read your favorite English red letter translation of verses 27 to 30. This is what we're about mm. ready to do. We've got two verses, two episodes for this one PDF. Step one, read your favorite English red letter translation of verses 27 to 30. And then compare and contrast it with George Howard's English translation provided. Mm. Take note of the major and minor differences. Help me now, I mean, why is that important? That they would have English translations and then compare them to the translation of Howard. Why might that be helpful? I think it's important always to work with, unless you're reading the original text of the, or the text of the original language. Mm -hmm. And even then, I think it's important to compare different translations because every translation is someone's interpretation. Mm -hmm. And what are the possible interpretations? That's important mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. You may read something and say, well, it's obvious it means this, and you might be right, but what are other possible ways that Amen. may be less obvious, but maybe they're true, mm -hmm. or they're more obvious to somebody else? And so it's important to see what all the possibilities are when you read a text. Mm -hmm. Step number two, read through, and this is a gift Are from these the five smooth stones? No. <laughs> this is Can stone I number, that? Absolutely. Stone number one. Stone number I wish two. you would tell that story, <laughs> but I'm not going to let you tell right, it. Go I got to finish. Step number two, read through the vowel-pointed Hebrew interlinear manuscript, which we call it the eclectic text. Mm -hmm. Even if you are not able to read the Hebrew words, we have provided a literal mm -hmm. English translation for your consideration. Mm -hmm. This is one of the greatest gifts that have been given. The fact that we've, you, well, now you wouldn't do this. You, you stopped me, you said, you gotta do your own translation. But as far as giving us the pointed text, mm -hmm. it is huge. Okay, mm -hmm. that is step number two. Step number three, read through what I'm calling the red alerts. Now, Nehemia doesn't know this, it's kind of a setup. I'll take one of these red, alerts, the red alerts and then I'll throw it to <laughs> Nehemia you know? and he'll do the tap tap. And so you're getting a chance to study with Nehemia. Read through the red alerts and add more meat to the matter by expanding the possible meaning of these words using your favorite Bible research tools. One of our Bible research tools mm -hmm. is you. Okay. You are, amen. Do you, do you mind? Isn't sure, that what no, you're I'm, saying? I'm you're, honored. Offering, you're offering that. You're honored, honored to this. be that. Okay. Now here's the most controversial of all of them. Step number four, read the KJV. What's the KJV, Nehemiah? Keith Johnson version. So you do watch my stuff. You do know what's going on. I've heard you, you made do, that. You do watch. Tell me you watch my stuff. No. I don't. Well, I've heard you say that no, before. No. Read the Keith Johnson version <laughs> and consider creating your own translation based on your encounter with the red letters. I want to mm. say and stop for a second. That's beautiful. This is not really my translation. Mm. What it is, is taking all of the resources that I have, including you. Dr. Mm -hmm. Moster's looked at this. A number of people have looked at mm -hmm. it. Study partners in the past have looked at it. And what's beautiful about that mm -hmm. is that I feel the confidence to say, here's an option. Okay. But guess what? There is an uh, NJV, uh, the Nehemiah 
I'm Johnson just saying, NGV. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as cool as KJV, you gotta admit, that's kind of That hard. is pretty cool. Okay, last thing, and the most important, back to Dr. Uh, Dr. Mark, reflect on how you might apply these red letters into your life. So, again, mm. that's what the study guide is. For people that want to do that, you go to BFA International, Red Letter Series. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was free for everybody up through episode 19. But in the Roll Up Your Sleeves series, it is now only for those people that are study partners. I would like to encourage people to become mm -hmm. that for us because as they do that, they're able to reap more benefits from our time together. Now, we're about to go into two, uh, two verses in this episode, folks. I'm going to actually ask the editors to say it's for mature audiences. Okay. Can we, can we get right into this? I mean, let, can, sure. let's get right into it as we read let's it, read as it. we understand it. And Verses we're going to read it in Hebrew first. Oda mar lahem, shmatem mashane mar lakadmonim lo af. He further said to them, you have heard what was said to the ancients, you shall not commit adultery. And I say to you that everyone who sees a woman and covets her has already adultered with her in his heart. No, the reason I said... Or in her heart. Hopefully we'll have time to get to that. Now, Nehemiah, th this is really a practical question. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to commit adultery? Now, you're going to say this. Here's what you're going to say. You're yeah. going to say, oh, boy, everyone knows. Every, we've known. You, you're reading this. I want to ask this question right yeah. now. What does it mean? Technically. Okay. I don't mean graphically. Yeah. Technically. Um, okay. Let's see what the Tanakh says about that. I love it. Okay. <laughs> um, let us open up here in the Torah. And we have, uh, uh, let's see. Where do we have this? Um, Leviticus 20. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Like, let's, and this is a good question. Let's say we didn't, had no idea what the word adultery was. Exactly. And instead of the word adultery, we put in the word, um, uh, uh, I don't know, camel. Right. Uh, right. Thou shalt not camel. Well, I don't know what camel means. Exactly. Okay. And can I stop you? Yeah. Unchurched. Mm -hmm. First time I read this, 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. this, you're going to laugh at this. Adultery in English. So I know what the word adult means. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not commit. It's maybe what adults do. Uh, um, what what no. adults do? <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. All right. So Leviticus 20.10 says, uh, if a man commits adultery with a married woman. So that's important. That's key. So adultery involves a married woman. Committing adultery with another man's wife. So it's something you're doing with another man's wife that you shouldn't be doing. Uh, the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. Mm -hmm. That's Leviticus 20, verse 10. And just from that, we understand that adultery is having sexual relations with another man's wife. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's important because people might say, um, you know, you, you, you're two 17-year-olds or 18-year-olds, 18 18-year-old and you know you had um, ex, you know relations outside of marriage. That's not adultery, right? Right. That's a whole separate thing. It's a whole separate adultery thing. is the woman is married to somebody else, and a man had relations with her. That in, is adultery. In technical terms, that in other words, that's the definition of adultery. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, if we want to see some interesting related scenarios, we can go and look at um, Deuteronomy mm -hmm. has a very important passage here, and in Deuteronomy. 22, mm -hmm. has a series of scenarios of something that isn't adultery, but it's also forbidden. Hmm. Um, it's a, you can maybe even say it's a form of adultery, although that word, mm -hmm. uh, I don't believe that word is used there. So um, it starts in 22 in the Hebrew verse, um, let's see, where is this? No, that's not it. Um, here we go. No, that's not it. Okay. 2222. If a man is found lying with another man's wife, both, and what does lying mean? They're having sex, mm -hmm. right? Lying, that, lying uh, that is shochev, is to lie down. That's a euphemism. Okay. What do I mean by euphemism? A euphemism is uh, what we call in Hebrew, lishon nikia, a clean way of saying something that is um, graphic. Okay. Uh, and in this case, they're, they're having, it means they're having sex. Mm -hmm. So if a man is found having sex with a uh, woman 
who is Bulat Baal, she's a, a, a wife of a husband, umetu gam shnehem, both of them shall die. Ha'ish ha'shochevim ha'isha ve'ha'isha, the man who lies, who has sex with the woman and the woman, and you will remove evil from Israel. So here it leaves no, no, nothing to the imagination. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very clear. Now, now we have these scenarios. That's adultery. Now we have some scenarios that are a type of adultery. Um, let's see. In the case of a virgin who is engaged to a man, if a man comes upon her in town and lies with her, you shall take the two of them out to the gate of that town and stone them to death. Right, so here it's a woman who's not married, but she is betrothed, mm -hmm. right? And engaged in, in, in the Tanakh, engagement is a form of marriage, right? It's, they haven't consummated the marriage yet, mm -hmm. but for all other intents and purposes, she's designated to that man. Um, the girl, because she did not cry for help in the town, and the man, because he violated another man's wife. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's pretty clear here. It's adultery. Thus you will sweep away evil from your midst. Mm -hmm. But if the man come up, comes upon the engaged girl in the open country and the man lies with her by force, only the man who lay with her shall die. Mm -hmm. So what's, what is it saying here? Is, uh, it says, but you shall do nothing to the girl. It says, the girl did not incur the death penalty for this case is like that of a man attacking another and murdering him. So what we have here is a case. The first scenario is the woman consented to have the sex the engaged woman, and so both of them are executed. Mm -hmm. In the second scenario, even if she consented, we give her the benefit of the doubt. It really has to do here with burden of proof, right? They lived in a world that a woman could easily cry out and someone could come and save mm -hmm. her. In the countryside, it doesn't matter if she cries out. There's, nothing she can, there's nobody around to save her. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to, um, it's interesting because we have this idea in, in, in uh, America where we've been told, always believe the woman. And here, in a sense, the principle is never believe the woman. Of course she's going to lie. She's going to be executed. Why wouldn't she lie? Mm -hmm. So in this case, you give her the benefit of the doubt because there's nothing she could have done, even if she did cry out. Mm -hmm. right? Obviously, she, um, she may have cried out. And in the city, now we live in a city where you can cry out and it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. right? So the modern application would be everybody lives in the countryside mm -hmm. from the Torah perspective. Right? You could be in a crowd of people in a crowded place mm -hmm. and get raped. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the first scenario is consensual adultery, and the second scenario is rape. And we learn something profound here unrelated to adultery, mm -hmm. which is that rape is tantamount to murder. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what it says. It, it, it compares. There's actually a statement in the Talmud that this, uh, there's an analogy here, and the analogy came to teach us something, but we actually learned about the thing it, what it was being compared to. Mm -hmm. The phrase is uh, It came to teach and, and it uh, ended up learning. Mm -hmm. We ended up learning from it. Um, so the, the verse says, um, uh, uh, where was it? Um, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. Um, uh, I just read it. Hold on a second. Oh, uh, the girl did not incur, this is verse 26. The girl did not incur the death penalty for this case is like that of a man attacking another and murdering him, mm -hmm. right? So you don't blame a murder victim, so you don't blame a, a rape victim. But So it came to teach us that she's the victim and you don't blame the victim, but we also learn from this that m rape is analogous to murder, mm -hmm. right? It's comparable to murder and the victim of rape is like the victim of murder. Mm -hmm. So it's a very powerful uh, image there. It's incredible because people take this passage, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 22, and they completely twist it and they take it to mean that a woman is required to marry her rapist, mm -hmm. which is not what it says at all. Mm -hmm. Consent is clearly the, the guiding principle here, is, and it goes over to the next passage, which we won't get to at the moment. Um, so that's what adultery is. It's mm -hmm. having sex consensually mm -hmm. with um, a woman having sex consensually with a man who's not her husband. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. I, and I asked, asked Dr. Moses this. When you hear this, uh, he says an interesting thing. But when you hear this, what do you, you think of it? He immediately says, of course, I think of the Ten Commandments. He's, he's teaching the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything in this first verse? Again, he said to them, you've heard what was said to the ancient ones or to the to the, to the Eastern ones or wh mm -hmm. whoever we say, yeah. you shall not commit adultery. Is there anything in oh, the phrase? That, that, is, is the yeah. phrase exactly? Now, would you do us one favor, Nehemiah? Yeah. Would you take the words Yeshua spoke uh -huh. and ask, 
even grammatically. Maybe, maybe he's talking about something else. Does it match Deuteronomy? Does it match Exodus? All right. So in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14, and De- or sorry, Exodus chapter, let me start over. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 14, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, we have the same exact words verbatim, lo tin af, and yes. you shall not commit adultery. Okay, now, the and, reason that and I... And these s- are the exact words, correct me if I'm wrong here, let's see. Yes. These are the exact words we find. Let me look, I have here a comparison of all the manuscripts. Yes, that's what... Let me make sure that this is the same here. So now we're looking in the manuscripts, and in the manuscripts, does it have lo tin af in all of them? It has Lotin Alpha manuscript Z, manuscript C, manuscript N, manuscript manuscript T. The the noon of Tin Alpha was eaten by worms. Okay, uh, but other than that, says Lotin Alpha. <laughs> okay, uh, manuscript V, E, F, D, G, K, Q, W, A. All of them have the exact words in the Ten Commandments. Manuscript J, X, Y, Gamma, B, L, and or M. It doesn't have this passage at all. Um, meaning it's an abbreviated text. Did you just uh, R and H? So all for- those have. Lo tinaf, unanimously, thou shalt not murder all the manuscripts that have this verse. Okay, so that's what I wanted to establish. Mm-hmm. There's no smoking gun about these two words. That we, for, for what we've, well, they're, just they're, the two they're, words themselves. They're, they're, it's a direct quotation from the Ten Commandments, letter by letter. Okay, awesome. It's not, it's not a paraphrase, it's a direct quotation. Okay. Lo tinaf, thou shalt not commit adultery. So if adultery. you don't learn anything else, and yeah. you say, I don't want any more, yeah. we do know technically what it means. Mm-hmm about this particular And we have a very graphic description of it in Deuteronomy and maybe a little bit less so in Leviticus. You know, uh, we're going to go to the plus section now. Oh, my goodness. Before we get to the plus (laughs) section, can I tell people about there's something from history, and we'll we'll throw it up here on the screen. What we have here is called the, um, I forget what it's called. It's called something like the Iniquitous Bible. Oh, it's called the the, the (laughs) Wicked Bible because there was a uh, a printer's error. Instead of... Lotinaf in English, thou shalt not commit adultery. The word not was left out, and it says thou shalt commit adultery. <laughs> Talk about um, tra- you know, errors of transcription. Errors of transcription. And you know, when yeah. was that? How many some years ago? Uh, yeah, in the early days of printing. Yeah, in the early days of printing. So, or the early days of the English translation, really. Now, we're going to get down into the nitty gritty because Yeshua does something I think is pretty controversial mm-hmm. in the next. Part. I think most people would even say this, um, and maybe he didn't know what he's talking about. They'd say he didn't know what he's talking about. It's just not human nature. But when we get into the mm. detail of what he says, language, history, and context, it jumps off the page. So are you ready to jump into I'm that? ready. What I'm excited about here is I think a lot of Christians take this passage, this series of statements where we have these contrasts. You have heard it said, but I heard it say. You have heard it said, but I say. You have heard it said, but I say. And they say, well... Now, Jesus came to bring a new Torah, That's a right. new law. That's right. There's the law of Moses and there's the law of Christ. And the law of Christ is more spiritual. It's um, more uh, emotional. It's, it's more in your heart, less to do with your actions. Uh, we're going to see if that's the case. And one of the things we're going to look at that's related to that whole discussion is the Catalan scriptures, the Catalan uh, Hebrew gospels, uh, which are found in the Vatican, uh, Dr. Miles Jones has talked about them. We're going to look at this specific passage, oh, wow. and we're going to see something that is just like mind blowing. I think mm. that really brings a contrast when you compare it to Shem Tov's Hebrew Matthew mm-hmm. to say, okay, what is what is Yeshua saying here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm excited well, about that. We're going to move to that. I want to make a challenge to every single one of you. I'm challenging mm-hmm. every single one of you to take advantage of becoming a study partner. Here's the great news on our site. BFA International, I mm-hmm. did a really radical thing. I made it so that you can try it for seven days for free. If you don't like it, move on. Nobody has an excuse. We are about to study with Dr. Nehemia Gordon, PhD from Bar-Alan University. This, if, if, if there's no other verse <laughs> that we get to the detail on, Nehemia, if this is the only verse, I'm telling you right now, this changed my life. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you, it was because years ago, we were, we were looking at this and I just... I didn't know if Yeshua knew what he was talking about there, but it, uh-huh. I think he did, and I think you should get a chance to hear language, history, and context. So can we move to Plus BFA International? You become a premium member, and you have access to everything. Say everything. Everything. Especially the Plus. Can we pray? Uh, yeah. Yehovah, thank you so much for giving us your beautiful Torah, mm-hmm. for letting us have a, an instruction book, Torah meaning instruction of how to live our lives and walk with you to walk out our lives with you, to walk about with you, the way Enoch walked with you, the way that you walked through the garden with Adam and Eve. We want to walk with you in our lives. Mm. Thank you for this Torah that lets us walk with you. 
Amen. Amen. And Father, thank you for those words that were spoken as we've heard to the ancient ones, mm -hmm. to the ones that so long ago that still stand today. But however, mm -hmm. we need to understand these words, language, history, and context. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the tools. Thank you for the gifts. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you that we get to continue on in this process of understanding your word. And uh, we just give you all the praise, glory, and the honor in your name. Amen. Amen. Amen.